Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're gonna to be covering how to create a new custom object within your Salesforce org. So there are a few different ways to do this, but first let's cover what is an object within Salesforce. An object is just simply a grouping of data pieces. So you're gonna be putting each piece of data that you have into different categories. Salesforce has standard objects, which are going to be things like accounts, opportunities, leads, contacts, campaigns, cases. Those are all groupings of data. So opportunities, those are essentially deals that you have within your company's pipeline. Leads, those are gonna be people who are interested, but not quite you are working on the deal yet. Cases, those are gonna be tickets that you generally have within your system, be that for customer service or technical support. Then things like accounts are typically going to be the companies. So those are just general objects. They're just groupings of data or groups that you want to track. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going to, let's show you a few different ways. So I went up here to the gear icon. Now I'm gonna to go to setup. From here you can, we're gonna get rid of these. We're gonna to go to object manager, and then we can go over here to the right-hand side and click create. We have a couple of options. We could do this from the schema builder, which I'll also show you later. We could add a custom object, add custom object from spreadsheet. I am just gonna add a custom object here to show you the basic. This is how I would do this if I were creating it with all the bells and whistles. Here, I'm going to create the label. This is just going to be what your object is housing. So. An example here that I could add are classes. So let's say we are creating a college class tracker of all the classes that we need to take. And then we can have other groups of data that could be the individual assignments that we need to create, the individual assignments that we need to submit, the individual papers that we need to write and have that information, but we can talk about that later. Right now, we're just going to use this example of you're in college and you need a place to track all of your classes and your class schedules. So let's go ahead and actually change it to class and then classes to that plural. Anything that has a red bar next to it, like label, plural label, object name, that is going to be required. So you have to have that. This does not start with a vowel sound. You can add a description. I am going to say the classes required for the degree path. Awesome. We can open the standard salesforce.com trading window. That's going to be one. Uh, we can have a record name. So what this is going to be is on your page layout, just saying like, hey, it's going to show up as class name when it's talking about that record such as like case number, that's just going to be the same as case name or class name. Let's go ahead. We can choose a text data type or an auto number. So auto number would be great if we had an order object where you have different orders that are coming in. But I'm just going to select this as a text data type because we don't necessarily need it to have any auto numbers. We are going to allow reports, allow activities, track field history. So reporting, you can report off of these different classes. You can allow activities, things like phone calls, tasks, that kind of thing. Those are gonna be activities. Uh, field history, that's just going to track the changes of the different fields. So if we changed a class name from bio 101 and we misspelled it as like bio 100 we could change that and it would show that hey that name was changed uh, i'm going to allow and chatter we're going to allow sharing allow bulk api access streaming we can select the deployment status if you're doing this in development or if you're doing this in production i recommend that you do this as an in development status so that way you can test this out and you can build out all the features before people are coming in here and adding all of their data but because this is a test org for me that i only use for tutorials and i'm the only one who's accessing it i'm going to say deployed so then we can see it we are going to allow search add notes and attachments and then I'm gonna launch new custom tab wizard. So this is just going to allow us to access this a little bit more. I am going to hit save here. 
Awesome. And now that tab wizard is available for us. So we can choose a tab. This is relates back to Salesforce Classic and when they changed UIs. Essentially, you, it doesn't matter what you add here because you probably won't see it. So let's just go ahead and add one that is applicable. I'm going to say Apple and then we can add a splash page, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click next. So visibility on profiles is who can see this based upon their profile. Typically profiles are going to be associated to someone's job functionality, such as uh, you can see here, custom marketing profile. So anyone who's in the marketing department or who has that assigned, the sales profile, uh, support profile, that kind of thing. I am just gonna have this default on for everybody, but make sure to test this out and see who you want to have access to these these new objects. So it's just adding tabs for the custom apps so then we can access them from different spots within Salesforce. I'm going to hit save here and there we go. We have created the new object. We can add fields here. So if we wanted to say who instructor is, what semester to take it in or what quarter to take it in, we could add that as a new field later on. But if we wanted to go in and check it out on the front end of Salesforce, we could do that. I'm going to refresh this page and then search for class. You can see classes here. Awesome. And it is available to us. We don't have any data in here or any fields. So if we create new, it would just say, hey, the class name and then save it because that's the only thing that shows up. Let's show you one more way to do this. This can be really useful to do if you have a lot of different objects that you're creating at once, or if you are trying to create different relationships with different objects. So being able to link it back and forth. Um, I'm not going to schema settings. I'm wanting to go to schema builder here. And this is just going to show you the relationship of all the different objects that you have in your Salesforce system. Now this might be a little bit too much beyond the scope of this video. I'm just going to clear all and then if we want to create a new object, we go over here to elements and then drag that object over here. And then we can go through and create very similar things to what we just did in that process of creating the label, the plural label, the object name, what data type it is. But then you'll need to go back and do the tabs so then you can have access to it. If you're having trouble accessing it, I would recommend checking the in-development status as well as checking out the tabs and seeing if that's available as well as profiles. That's going to be an issue if you don't have access to it via your profile. But that is how you create a new custom object within Salesforce and a little bit of knowledge along the way. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can check out the courses down in the description or on Udemy Business and on LinkedIn Learning. You can connect with me on LinkedIn at Emily Call MBA. Thank you so much. I'll catch you guys in the next one.